The Gene Pemberton Halftime Interview is brought to you by Howell Dental Associates, South 31st Street in Temple, Dr. John Howell, Wildcat 1959, making smiles in Temple for 36 years. You're listening to Temple Wildcat Football on K1017. Hey, welcome in to halftime. We're, we're giving these boys all they want tonight, 14 to 7, and they've been up by 40 in the last two weeks. Uh, we got a special guest on tonight. We we gonna ha- we've had all of our last two years. We've had uh, players from the state champion finalists and the state champions we've had here, and uh, we're going into a little different mode here for a couple of weeks. Robert Papelka, who won the Kern Tips Award, to be with us the next out of town game. But tonight uh, we've got a good friend and. Uh, he coached here for a lot of years, and I'll let him do the talking in a minute. Uh, uh, Quentin Gibson, Reverend Quentin Gibson from St. James Methodist Church, who's really been a, a help for our coaches down through the years, uh, will be here hopefully next week. He had a kidney transplant, and so uh, doctors wouldn't release him tonight, so Larry stepped in for us. We was going to reverse that. But... Uh, Glad to have Larry with us. And, you know, I'm going to let Larry do the talking because Larry, <laughs> Larry uh, played over at Mary Harden Baylor a few years ago, then went back home to Laredo, and then came back up there, and he's been in Central Texas ever since. So, Larry, kind of recap your coaching career for us and how many years you've been in coaching. Well, I graduated in 77 uh, from Mary Harden Baylor, went home, started coaching at uh, junior high there a couple of years and then in 1980 i came to temple started lamar middle school and then uh, got promoted to the high school and coached with george johnson who was one of the junction boys we coached a freshman team together and uh then got promoted in 83 to coach the varsity receivers and signal the offense and i signaled the offense for coach mcqueen for uh, 17 years i believe and uh it was really exciting uh to be on the sidelines and then to be part of all those great championship teams and, of course, especially the 92 team. Yeah, Larry Larry has coached under everybody since McQueen brought him here except for Coach Spradlin, and he retired right before Coach Spradlin came uh, and been very successful. In fact, his number is the only number hanging on the outfield wall at the baseball field, and uh, that's kind of ironic on how that happened because you coached a young man who's well tell us that story well craig called me up one day he says coach i want i want to retire your number and i said well craig usually um when when they retire numbers people have died <laughs> and but he said he just wanted to honor me for all the years that i coached uh varsity baseball here at temple i was the head baseball coach for 23 years and and i loved every minute of it and uh he's he been there a while uh you know my two kids uh, and one of them's been in the 50s now, another one in the late 40s, and he coached one of them, so it goes way back. And, uh, you know, the Temple Wildcat is a family, and uh, they they love each other, and it, it's an amazing situation. But uh, all of your years in coaching, except for the first two years, are here at Temple, and uh, that's pretty impressive because Larry just settled in here and coached – Name the coaches you play, you uh, worked on. Well, I coached for, for 20 years for Coach McQueen and uh, from 80 to 2000 when he retired. And and I was blessed that he coached one of my sons, Benjamin. And then um, uh, I had three kids that graduated from here, by the way, from Temple High School, and we're proud of that. Then I coached two years with David Beal and then three years with Tam Hollingshead and three years with Bryce Munson. And I retired after 29 years in Temple and 32 total years of, of coaching and teaching. And, and it I wouldn't trade it for anything else. I always told people I was playing games and getting paid for it. You know, one of the strange things about Temple and Coach McQueen, when I went down with Drayton to uh, work with the Astros for 18 years, uh, we decided we was going to get some playoff games down there. You know, Dome sat there and never got any because nobody would be aggressive. We turned that around, and that one year we had 28 playoff games, six of the seven state championship teams, before they started settling on one side. And uh, ironically, uh, 
we had teams, Art Bross, who was at Stephenville, came to Houston because he played in Houston and played the Lamarck in the Dome, which that's just like exactly. a home game for Lamarck. But he said, I know y'all treat me right. And uh, it was fun. We had we had the best uh, time there. And, and people, I'd call those coaches, being in the school business for 32 years at American Desk, you'd call and it, and it ironically, n- nearly nine times out of ten, the person you was talking to, you knew from the school business. And the first thing they'd say, well, Gene, you still in Temple? And they'd say, yeah. He says, is McQueen still there? Everybody <laughs> in Texas knew who Bob McQueen was. <laughs> and uh, so, that's, so that gave you a foot in the door. But, uh, you know, you had that baseball program up here for a lot of years. You coached a lot of good baseball players too, didn't you? I, I coached some really, really good players. You know, uh, you start naming them, it, it, it's hard to remember every one of them. But from Craig Martin, who coaches here, Joey Hegg, uh, Derek Stanford, uh, Mike Hazel, who was an Olympian, Patrick Stanford, who was a great center fielder. Uh, just go on and on. Billy Muskie's played in the All-Star game for us, uh, Texas High School Baseball All-Star game. And uh, I just, you know, I could just start naming them one, one by one. You know, David Myers played at TCU. Uh, there were some great kids that played for us. You're talking about Patrick Stanford. He was a low-key guy. When he played in that All-Star game down there, you know, you had those hot shot pitchers that, Ended up playing in the big leagues himself, and he got, he got three or four hits in that game. He was the leading hitter in the All Star game. He got two hits and he stole three bases. Yeah, and, and amazing. John John Langerhans was a coach of that. He was a coach at Round Rock. He coached that particular team Patrick was on, and he told me, Larry, you got you a dandy right there in Patrick Stanford, and he was. Patrick was an incredible baseball player for us. And you know his is he played uh, in the Astro chain we drafted uh, we drafted his brother, his brother. yeah drafted his, brother. his brother derek derek and byron wilkerson who played for us here played at mary harden baylor were both drafted yep. by the astros and i got to see them in Kissimmee. i was very fortunate that uh drayton mclean uh invited me to go to Kissimmee from 93 till 98 i believe that was, 99. Your vacation. <laughs> that was my vacation uh and i got to to do some baseballing and do a little bit of disneyland and that kind of stuff and and i loved it, it, it the, the astros were great to me Drayton mclean was great, great to me and and I, everything i learned i brought back and tried to instill it in the wildcat baseball program well you know uh, you've known Drayton a long time and there's not any more Drayton mcleans in this world find a man has ever breathed his breath and uh i tell you one thing uh you know my charge in being in community development later chaplain was we're going to exhibit not not let's try to we're going to exhibit high christian principles and uh integrity in everything we do and uh people say well look what drayton's done in central texas People don't realize what Drayton's done in Central Texas. There's so much stuff that they don't know about that he did behind the scenes that's amazing. But he don't want people to know it. He just uh, he does it is under the Lord. And, you know, I drove by today that new uh, Salvation Army McLean uh, Hope Center, and that's going to be opening up here this month. And uh, it's just really amazing what's happened. But... Anyhow, I know you used to enjoy coming down there, and uh, you knew a lot of our players because of that. And then when we'd have the caravan up here, uh, you got to see them again. I got to see them again. All, of course, all the big names, but one of the favorite for some of our kids was Jose Lima, and when he came into town, he would ask our senior kids if he could go play billiards with them, and so they'd go play billiards with him, and I just told him make sure they get back home in time yeah, uh, for school. <laughs> Paid the bus driver one night and took them kids to claim. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to ground him after that. Uh, <laughs> but that was Jose, and then and Jose died in an early uh, age. Exactly, too. exactly. It's amazing. Uh, so you spent your career right here in Temple, and you still live here, and uh, – you know, you're Temple I. You, I'm, you, I'm Temple. I'm, I bleed blue. You cut me, I'm gonna be, bleed blue, and 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 uh, had plenty of opportunity to go to go a lot of places, and because of men like Bob McQueen and Don Davis and Randy Mann and people like that, uh, I didn't go anywhere. I stayed here. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Darren, who's the station 
head man out there is telling me we've got less than a minute. So I appreciate you coming on, Larry. It's been a lot of fun having you. It's been good having you in Temple. You love Temple, and you got a lot of kids in life you touched. And so uh, thanks a bunch. And uh, 15 minutes goes in a hurry. Yeah, it goes in a hurry, Gene. And thank I, you so much. It's my honor to come up here today. Well, thank you a bunch. The Gene Pemberton Halftime Interview is brought to you by Howell Dental Associates, South 31st Street in Temple, Dr. John Howell, Wildcat 1959, making smiles in Temple for 36 years. You're listening to Temple Wildcat Football on K1017.